Once upon a time, in the vast wilderness of the Illinois Territory, a group of French settlers embarked on a journey southward and westward. Their destination was the fertile plain along the mighty Mississippi River, where they aimed to establish a new settlement. And so it was that in the year 1703, they founded a thriving community known as Kaskaskia. For over a century, Kaskaskia flourished as the bustling commercial and cultural capital of Illinois. Stone mansions and charming French-style homes adorned its streets, giving the town an air of elegance, albeit with a touch of shabbiness. The population was a diverse mix of French settlers and French-American Indians who tilled the land, raised livestock, and operated various businesses such as general stores, a hat shop, and even a few tailor shops. Life in Kaskaskia was vibrant, but its fate would soon take a dark turn. In the year 1818, the young state of Illinois sought a new capital, one more centrally located than Kaskaskia. The honor was bestowed upon the burgeoning city of Vandalia, and with a tinge of regret, the state officials bid farewell to Kaskaskia. Little did they know that this departure would mark the beginning of the end for the once thriving town. As the years passed, the mighty Mississippi River began to change its course. Its waters shifted, encroaching upon the edges of Kaskaskia. Flooding became a constant threat, washing away homes and farms along its banks. By 1881, the relentless river had completely severed the town from the mainland, transforming the peninsula into an isolated island. Kaskaskia was left a ghost town, a mere remnant of its former glory. But what had caused this tragic downfall? Some whispered of an ancient curse that had befallen the city, sealing its fate and conjuring restless spirits. The tale of this curse harked back to 1735 when a wealthy fur trader named Bernard resided in Kaskaskia. Bernard lived in a lavish stone house with his beloved daughter, Maria, a radiant young woman who captured the hearts of many. Among those who fell under Maria's spell was a young Indian who had received an education from French missionaries. The bond between Maria and the Indian grew stronger, and love blossomed between them. When Bernard discovered their forbidden romance, his rage knew no bounds. He swiftly dismissed the young Indian from his employ and enlisted the support of friends and fellow merchants to ensure the Indian could find no work in town. Undeterred, the young Indian promised Maria that he would return for her, and with heavy hearts, they bid Kaskaskia farewell. A year passed, and one day, a group of mysterious Indians arrived in the town from the west. Among them was Maria's lover, disguised so as not to arouse Bernard's suspicion. In secret, Maria and her lover arranged a clandestine meeting and fled north, hoping to escape Bernard's wrath. Infuriated by his daughter's defiance, Bernard vowed vengeance upon the Indian. Gathering a group of companions, he pursued the young lovers relentlessly. They eventually caught up with them near Cahokia, and in a moment of blind fury, Bernard ordered the Indian's execution by drowning. Bound to a log, the young man was cast into the unforgiving waters of the Mississippi. But before he disappeared beneath the murky surface, he uttered a fearsome curse. The Indians swore that within a year, Bernard would meet his demise, and he and Maria would be reunited forever. Furthermore, Kaskaskia and the surrounding land would be plagued with destruction. The altars of the town's churches would crumble, homes would be reduced to rubble, and even the dead would rise from their graves in eternal torment. As the cursed words left his lips, the river claimed the Indian, swallowing him whole. The prophecy set in motion a series of tragic events. Maria, consumed by grief over her lover's fate, succumbed to despair and joined him in the realm of the departed. Bernard, entangled in a disastrous business deal, challenged a man he believed had swindled him to a deadly duel. In that fateful encounter, Bernard met his own demise. The vengeful river, too, began its relentless assault on Kaskaskia. Its ever-changing channels brought incessant floods, relentlessly battering the once prosperous town. By 1973, the desolation was complete. Kaskaskia lay abandoned, its cemetery washed away, and the bodies of its departed residents rising to the surface, only to vanish beneath the relentless currents. The curse had come to pass, the dead of Kaskaskia had indeed risen from their graves. To this day, if you venture to the area, you will find only fragments of the once grand city. The remnants of Kaskaskia, now accessible only from Missouri, serve as a chilling reminder of a curse fulfilled. 
and if you listen carefully in the stillness of the night, you may hear faint whispers carried by the wind, the lingering voices of those who met their tragic fate in the ill-fated town of Kaskaskia.